Good morning. Welcome to another day of being unemployed. Not gonna lie, I'm quite enjoying this time off, as long as I don't think about how much money I'm losing. Today's main job focus is to follow up with all of the companies that I met on Sunday at Silicon Milk Roundabout. I got an email directly from Moo, which I was surprised about. The guy at the stand didn't seem particularly interested on the day, and I don't think they took one of my CVs either, but unless they emailed everyone, something must have stood out. Because I got an email saying that they'd like me to come in for an interview in the next week. So that's quite exciting. I've got a phone call with him tomorrow. I can learn a bit more about the company and what they're looking for and tell them what my situation is. They also have an open house event tomorrow. So it looks like tomorrow evening I'll be able to go to the office and, and meet people. And that's a great way to find out what a company is actually like, to go into the office. That should be fun. Also today, I'm recording a few other videos. I've got lunch with a friend. These days are disappearing so quickly. It is 20 to 12 now. I'm going out for lunch. Somebody I used to work with at Grey's now works at Monzo, the bank. So I'm going for lunch with him. This is absolutely not a recruitment kind of thing. When I went for lunch with the CTO of Triptease a couple of weeks ago, that was for me to learn about the company and for him to learn about me and it was a much more professional thing. This is just me going for lunch with a friend. But he does happen to work at Monzo. I'll ask him how it's going. It is a tech company in London. It's potentially somewhere I might apply, but I don't know, that's not the purpose of this. I'm actually just pleased to have a reason to get out of the flat. I was in all day yesterday. Monzo's office is actually just around the corner from a test's office. So I'm back at Old Street. I just got given a free chocolate mousse. Which I'll now awkwardly carry around with me. We're going to a restaurant called Tram Shed. I've been once before, I would highly recommend it. They've got really good food. Lunch is done. It was very nice, as expected. Gonna head back home. Getting the tube at this time is actually a dream. So quiet. On Friday this week, in three days, I'm going to Norway for the weekend. Now I'm expecting it to be freezing cold, so I ordered a new coat. And according to the DPD app, the guy is like outside my flat right now and I hope I don't just miss him. I've got it. It's really small. So you see, this is my current winter coat. I've had this for just over five years. And I know that because I got it right before I started university. As you can see, it's huge. It's got this huge fluffy hood. And that's my biggest problem with this coat. It's very inconvenient to travel with. Being on tubes and flights and trying to get cameras and phones and tickets out of your pockets with this thing on is a bit inconvenient. It's pretty warm, but overall the, the size to warmth ratio is very bad. So this is the jacket that I wanted. It's from Jack Wolfskin. It's hideously expensive, but I found it on this website called All Outdoor for £188 and with a Black Friday discount got it down to 160 which I appreciate is still very expensive, but it was a lot better, so I bought it. I'm worried that I've got like a kid's version or something. It looks okay so far. the right size we're off to a good start as you can see this thing is a lot smaller much easier to move in I'm not sure it's going to be as warm the best feature though is it comes with this little stuff sack and the whole thing fits inside of here I'm perfect for traveling anywhere so this afternoon along with recording some YouTube videos I want to follow up with more companies that I've got emails from research them a bit more and this moose I got is horrible and just generally progress with all of the applications. Mmm. That was not nice. I thought I'd have to put a lot more work into finding the companies from Silicon Milk Roundabout, find out how to apply and following up with them manually. But I have a lot of emails already from people I met there. I told you, handing CVs out works, they don't just go straight in the bin. I also have emails from random recruiters and other companies that have found me on LinkedIn and other websites. I've had a lot of emails, I haven't kept up with them very well. I'm going to try to power through as many as I can right now. This is from Stack Overflow Jobs, which I haven't really used before. 
Uh, this is the first email I've got. Emma Jennings at Arrow Groups. Looking for exceptionally bright individuals on behalf of Utility Warehouse. Never heard of them. They're apparently different because they aren't restrictive with their choices around technology. I mean, this is the kind of stuff everybody says. This is what I mean about companies not making it clear what they actually do and what they need developers for. Now, this is obviously a recruiter, not the company themselves, but same thing applies. Utility Warehouse. Okay, interesting. <laughs> On Glassdoor, there's a one-star review. I can't really find any information out about them. It's really odd to not be able to Google and find the job spec somewhere else. If a recruiter is trying to get people for a job, then the, the job is usually available online. Um, I'm going to click I'm not interested. Ah, so click... <laughs> Word of warning, as soon as you click it, it actually does the thing and tells them that you're not interested. This email says I have three new messages, so I guess I should just go to the page on Stack Overflow Jobs. See what's here. Marin Software, customer analytics developer for their London office. They want someone with two to three years of experience, ideally with Python. I don't, but it's probably fine. If you don't have everything that they put on the job spec, don't let it immediately put you off. Some really weird things in this email. Our hiring manager has developed a bespoke CRM system used by our customer success team. And it sounds like that's the thing I'd be working on. Then it says you'll also be mentoring our intern who is doing very well and improving each day. He has started development on the CRM system and has since developed some of his own features. I, d I don't know. I would love to give you great advice on how to evaluate emails like this. But I, I've, n I've no idea. This is a really odd message to get. I, I don't know whether I'm interested. <laughs> I'm going to come back to this one. I've also got ClearCube Consulting, low latency trading platform using Python and Erlang. Also Skyscanner. Um, I'd potentially be more interested to hear something about them. I have no idea what Skyscanner is like. As a company, I don't know how big it is, or where it is, or what tech they're using. It says they use Java and Python and Ruby here. Um, let's find out what happens when you click, I'm interested. Okay, it, it sends them a message before it gives you a chance to type anything. It's interesting. Okay, I guess it makes it easier. And finally, we have... Very Sart? They're in Kensington. Do I want to work in Kensington? They want to enable secure sale of works of art. <laughs> Again, I don't know. <laughs> it's, n it's not something I thought needed to be solved in the world. But hey, I've never bought art. I don't know. I imagine this is a small company. So they're on AngelList. AngelList is focused on startups. These numbers match what this email says, except with a different currency. Though I assume they don't mean dollars here, it's based in London. I, I don't want to work at a startup. Uh, one, yeah, one to ten employees. This one's no good. I don't know whether I should be responding to these people as well after I've clicked not interested. I suppose it doesn't really matter because they're recruiters, they'll be used to this, they'll not be offended. Okay, going back to emails. Another email from Stack Overflow. Um, these ones aren't messages, they're just random job suggestions. It's really difficult when it's just a lot of places I haven't heard of. If they're startups, like really tiny, I'm going to immediately rule them out. There's also this one, but this was again a really small company. I looked at them a few days ago. They're doing some interesting things though. It seems more agency style work where you just do an individual project and then move on to something totally new. I'll maybe try that someday. Trussell has built a state-of-the-art algorithm to match clients to mortgages by searching through more than 11,000 deals from 90 different lenders. This sounds really boring, I'm sorry. <laughs> I gave my details to Revolut. Um, this is just some kind of confirmation. I don't think I need to do anything else yet. I'll see if they contact me. They invite me to fill in an equal employment opportunity form regarding my recent job application. Okay. Not doing very well on the options for gender there, Revolut. Gusto is interesting. I was immediately attracted to it because they send boxes of food <laughs> in the post. <laughs> uh, ingredients to make meals. And it is something that, it's a product I feel like I could be personally interested in. But it's somewhat similar to what Greys are doing, um, sending food in the post. They also use PHP like Greys does, I think. So you can see why when I walk past this stand I was drawn in. I don't want to fall into the trap of doing something 
because it looks easy, because I've done it before, because it's the same as what I was doing at Grace. I've got a lot of experience with PHP. I can write PHP pretty well now, but it probably doesn't look the best on my CV if it's just like four or five years of PHP and, and not much else. I think it's in my best interest long term to do something else, but I also want to find something that I really enjoy. The hiring a back-end software engineer. Deep knowledge and experience of building PHP applications. I've certainly got that. Oh, they only give 22 days of holiday a year. 25 is, is standard. And then the eight bank holidays on top of that. Or you can buy some extra days. Interesting. Every company does this differently. Um, some will just give you more in the first place. Some let you buy them. Some let you just take a month of unpaid leave. Some will let you have unlimited holidays, but that one's usually not as good as it sounds. As in, you can take unlimited holidays, but nobody takes many holidays because they feel guilty for taking holidays and it just it doesn't work out very well. Maybe it does in some companies. I'm very interested in that model though. Not because I necessarily want it for myself but just because I think it's an interesting experiment um, for a company to do. I'm not sure coffee and tea really count as, as benefits. <laughs> it's, isn't that normal for an office to have? I'm gonna think a bit more about this one before I say no to them. Another company based in Paris. What is it about companies in Paris expecting people who live in London to go and work for them. Maybe I should, maybe I should move to Paris. It would be nice to be able to do that, to be like, oh, I fancy living in Paris, let's just go. It's not quite that easy though.